Olivia never expected that, after two years of passionate involvement, Jason would leave without a trace, not even taking a pair of underwear. He departed with an air of innocence and reason, expressing that he was sorry but had lost the connection and love. Olivia, surprisingly, was left speechless. Love, once willingly embraced, now seemed futile. The promises made during intimate moments, about a lifetime together, about unwavering commitment, what a load of nonsense. From the signs of growing apart to the actual separation, it only took a couple of months. When Jason walked away, Olivia, despite the hints, realized that all those sweet words, enough to circle the earth, were worthless. Marriage certificates couldn't hold things together, let alone sweet nothings. Olivia's heartbreak, reluctance, and anger were futile. There were no children, no financial disputes, no other entanglements, no use in making a fuss. Confronting Jason, whether through tears, threats, or persistent efforts, yielded the same result. The only cliched outcome, as expressed in song lyrics, was that Olivia had to heal alone. Olivia was truly hurt, she had been sincerely attached to Jason. During their two plus years together, Olivia wished she could transform herself into a vine, clinging to Jason. At that time, Jason loved her and was willing to let her grow on him, much like his own fascination with being attached to Olivia. However, he didn't want to be a vine, he wanted to be a nail, firmly embedded in the most irresistible part of Olivia, lingering until death. Now, Olivia continued to revel in the joy of being pierced by Jason's metaphorical nail, but Jason had abruptly pulled himself out. He decisively withdrew, leaving Olivia with a colossal void, unsure of how to fill it. Olivia resorted to healing herself, updating her social media, rambling, getting drunk a few times, making impulsive purchases, and crying a few nights. However, just as Olivia's wounds were starting to heal, she received unexpected news, Jason was engaged. Less than a month after extracting himself from Olivia's life, he was actively planning his engagement. Upon verifying the news, Olivia had a sudden revelation. The claims of losing feelings and amicable separation were just a smokescreen. Jason had prearranged a replacement for Olivia, moving on to a new relationship before ending the previous one. He was, in essence, a deceitful scoundrel. The grievances and anger that Olivia had been suppressing erupted like a compressed quilt suddenly punctured, or like perfectly timed popcorn in a microwave, bursting open with a pop. This was intolerable. Not loving her was one thing, but being deceived was unforgivable. Olivia's emotions instantly shifted back to resentment, even intensified. With gritted teeth and unwavering determination, Olivia vowed not to let Jason off easily. She was determined to retaliate, eye for an eye. Olivia had considered various methods to get back at Jason, exposing him, causing a scene, revealing the truth to his fiancé, or even hiring someone to disrupt his life. Yet, she dismissed each one. Such approaches had temporary effects, the chaos would subside, and Jason would continue living his life. They couldn't resolve Olivia's resentment, and they weren't satisfying enough. In the end, inspired by Jason's once spoken words about being a nail in her life, Olivia devised a plan. She decided to become a nail herself, embedding in Jason's new life, causing discomfort, awkwardness, and, ideally, pain that he couldn't escape. As long as Olivia didn't withdraw, Jason would endure discomfort, awkwardness, and pain. With this realization, Olivia couldn't help but let out a cold, bitter laugh. The thought alone was immensely satisfying. Olivia's plan involved embedding herself in Jason's new life, regardless of his engagement. Even if he got married, Olivia intended to be a constant presence. Once a woman is consumed by the desire for revenge, her abilities seem to multiply. Olivia did thorough research using various methods. She learned that the woman Jason abandoned her for was named Ariel, a bank employee and the daughter of a high-ranking official. Ariel's father, despite not being a top official, held a key position in Jason's supervisory unit, essentially controlling Jason's career. This explained Jason's meticulous efforts to pursue Ariel. Olivia couldn't fathom why Jason would abandon her for someone less attractive, considering his preferences in the bedroom. Ariel had an outgoing personality, simple hobbies, and spent most of her free time learning flower arranging at a floral shop. Olivia saw this as a typical pastime for affluent women with too much time on their hands, indulging in petty bourgeois tastes. However, it also became Olivia's shortcut to Ariel. Fate seemed to favor Olivia. 
With a few orchestrated chance encounters and shared interests, the two women, close in age, quickly became friends. Olivia, leveraging her background in hotel management and knowledge of flower arranging, smoothly inserted herself into Ariel's life. Olivia even impressed Ariel with her extensive knowledge of flower art, quickly earning her admiration. Olivia's information was accurate. Ariel, an easygoing and trusting woman, fell for Olivia's stories and soon started admiring her. After several shared meals, their friendship deepened. One day, as they left the floral shop, Ariel spontaneously suggested treating Olivia to a nice meal. Olivia's heart raced, struggling to contain the impending triumph. With a poker face, Olivia jokingly asked if Ariel had a boyfriend. Blushing, Ariel admitted she was engaged and getting married after the new year. Olivia maintained her smile, concealing a mix of jealousy and resentment. Ariel called Jason, referring to Olivia as her friend Mia. Olivia had decided to use a different name to prevent Jason from being cautious if Ariel mentioned her real name. Putting down the phone, Ariel suggested they go for hot pot. Olivia, with a feigned lack of hesitation, agreed, teasingly claiming she would be a third wheel. Ariel reassured her, saying it was okay. Sitting in a corner of the hot pot restaurant, separated by billows of steam, Olivia saw Jason enter. In just over two months, Jason had transformed, dressed impeccably in a suit and tie. Olivia recalled that Jason used to prefer wearing jackets, claiming that ties felt like a noose, restricting his breathing. The suited look was likely Ariel's preference. Observing Jason's transformed appearance, Olivia couldn't help but think that he had his own struggles, even deciding what to wear. However, she felt he deserved it. Ariel also noticed Jason, stood up, and waved at him. Jason walked over, not particularly noticing Olivia on his side. It wasn't until he walked through the steamy haze of hot pots and approached them that Olivia stood up and turned towards him. In that moment, Olivia felt that all the subtle preparations with Ariel were worthwhile. In over two years, Olivia had never seen Jason so utterly bewildered. It was akin to being caught in the act of infidelity. His eyes widened, and his mouth opened, but not a word came out. Eventually, he managed to squeeze out a, you. Quickly regaining composure, he stopped himself. Ariel, noticing Olivia's confusion, said, what's with the days? Haven't you seen a beautiful woman? This is Mia, the one I told you about. Ariel turned towards Olivia, Mia, this is my fiancé, Jason. Olivia responded with a graceful smile, confirming Ariel's earlier description of her. Ariel laughed, pulling Jason's sleeve in a mix of pride and shyness, we're a bit different. She's the talented one, and I'm the handsome one. I have a higher education, but he looks better than me. Olivia maintained her smiling facade, acknowledging Ariel's statement. Jason, who was undeniably good-looking, played along with a feigned and uneasy smile, saying, Mia, right? Hello? During that hot pot meal, Ariel indulged in romance, Jason in anxiety, and Olivia in playful mockery. Olivia, seizing opportune moments in Ariel and Jason's conversation or moments of affection, subtly inserted comments. She praised Jason for being attentive and considerate to Ariel, expressed jealousy over Ariel's affluent background, good job, and seemingly perfect love life, making Ariel the darling of fate. Ariel took it all in stride, accepting the compliments without fuss, but couldn't help but express some envy. She commented, Mia, you're so beautiful, ten times prettier than me, right Jason? Jason, caught in a delicate situation, attempted to answer by diligently serving Ariel food. Olivia felt that if there were an escape route, Jason would have gladly taken it. The sensation was immensely satisfying, a release of pent-up resentment, like a cat catching a mouse but not rushing to eat it, just watching it squirm in fear and frustration. Olivia enthusiastically steered the conversation towards topics that interested Ariel, prolonging the hot pot dinner for a good two hours. In the end, Jason made an excuse about work in the afternoon, paid the bill, and hastily left. Ariel, ever naive, seemed oblivious to Jason's unease and panic, casually remarking, men are quite boring, Mia. Women with women are more relaxed and have a certain charm. Olivia teased, why bother with dating and marriage then? Ariel laughed, well, that's different. Olivia agreed, indeed, men have their own merits. Ariel concurred, especially someone like you, a beauty like you shouldn't stay single. I'll find someone for you. Olivia replied, I'll be waiting. 
As expected, in the afternoon, likely after Ariel confirmed their separation, Jason couldn't wait to call Olivia. She deliberately delayed answering. Of course, she had to answer to see Jason in a frustrated state. True to her expectations, Jason was thoroughly frustrated. He accused Olivia of being cunning and questioned her use of a pseudonym. Olivia coldly responded, feigning innocence, I don't understand what you're talking about. Jason angrily retorted, what does Mia mean? Why hide your real name? Olivia, I didn't realize you were so good at pretending, so scheming. I underestimated you. Jason, being truly despicable, despite being the one who cheated and plotted first, now accused Olivia with righteous indignation. But Olivia wasn't someone easy to intimidate. She retorted with a single sentence, I've learned from you. You should be proud. This left Jason half-choked with anger. After a while, he struggled to control himself and asked in a lowered voice, What do you want? Olivia laughed, I just like Ariel, that's all. If you mind, just tell her the truth and keep her away from me. With that, Olivia hung up the phone. She didn't want to waste time lecturing him. Real battles with knives and swords were much more exhilarating than verbal sparring. Olivia was confident, Jason would never dare to tell Ariel the truth, if he had that courage, he would have done so from the beginning. Sure enough, after some time, Olivia didn't sense anything unusual from Ariel. Ariel continued to enthusiastically maintain their friendship, captivated by Olivia's skills that surpassed her own by a notch. Occasionally, as Olivia wished, she would bring Jason to join their activities, observing their flower arrangements, sharing meals, and even watching movies together. Jason resisted initially, finding various excuses, but Ariel managed to pull him into their company at least once out of three attempts. Olivia effortlessly continued her teasing, playful banter, and enjoyed the anticipated torment and frustration she caused Jason. Then, during one movie night, Ariel casually had Jason sit between the two of them. Ariel and Olivia, separated by Jason's thighs, frequently leaned over to discuss the plot. Each time Olivia leaned in, her hair gently brushed over Jason's legs, arms, and hands. Olivia could hear the awkwardness and anger in Jason's restrained breathing, that controlled discomfort. Olivia was thoroughly satisfied. As expected, she received a call from Jason that night. This time, Jason spoke in a conciliatory tone, a hint of humility in his plea. He begged Olivia to find a suitable excuse to stay away from Ariel. Jason admitted fault, apologized, and even offered compensation, up to a hundred thousand yuan. Olivia, however, didn't react with the cold laughter she used to. Instead, she simply smiled and asked, what do you have to compensate with? Jason replied, money. I can't offer more, at most, a hundred thousand. Olivia remained silent. A hundred thousand yuan was indeed tempting, but Olivia's goals were elsewhere. She declined Jason's offer, stating, You underestimate me, Jason. Don't insult yourself in attempting to insult me. When you abandon me, was it for the power in Ariel's father's hands? Does Ariel know how despicable you are? Jason, devoid of the confidence to argue, pleaded, Olivia, I admit to whatever you say. Even if I'm begging you, considering our past love, can you let me go? Olivia gently scoffed, What qualifications do you have to bring up the past? Without waiting for Jason to defend himself, Olivia hung up the phone. She then listened to the recorded conversation once again, chuckling to herself. Jason accused her of being scheming and conniving, didn't he? Well, she proved him right. However, Olivia didn't send the recording to Ariel. Even if Ariel found out, it wouldn't be very meaningful, either they would break up before marriage or go through a tumultuous period before tying the knot. Olivia, now composed, had no immediate plans and wasn't in the mood for love and marriage. She decided to make Jason uncomfortable for a while before considering anything else. Unexpectedly, Olivia's life took an unexpected turn. One day, while casually arranging seasonal flowers in the flower shop with Ariel, Olivia received a call from her mother. Olivia's taxi-driving father, fatigued from work, had been involved in a serious accident, leaving an elderly lady disabled. The other party demanded a substantial financial settlement, threatening legal action if they couldn't pay. Olivia's mother urged her to figure out a solution, secure the funds, and bail out her father. Olivia was dumbfounded. After a long pause, she managed to clumsily explain the situation to Ariel. Despite Ariel's usually simple-minded nature, she was surprisingly clear-headed at this moment, 
advising Olivia to act quickly and find a solution. Olivia, feeling helpless, asked her mother about the amount needed. Her tearful mother replied that they were still short by over a hundred thousand. After a quick mental calculation of her savings, Olivia had around seventy to eighty thousand. She shared this with Ariel, who immediately offered to lend her ten thousand as emergency funds. Olivia was taken aback and, after recovering from the surprise, insisted she couldn't accept Ariel's money. Ariel replied, consider it a loan. Repay me when you can. Right now, your father's situation is more critical. Do you really want him to go to jail? Stunned, Olivia suddenly burst into tears. She reluctantly accepted Ariel's 10,000 and went home. Through a combination of borrowing and pooling resources, Olivia managed to gather the necessary 500,000 for the compensation. Olivia's emotions were a mix of turmoil. Firstly, for the upheaval in her family, and secondly, for Ariel's genuine concern. This was something Olivia had never anticipated. While her focus was on retaliating against Jason, she hadn't considered the possibility of forming such a genuine friendship with Ariel during the process. If she continued on the same path, it would be inhuman. However, Olivia didn't have the courage to tell Ariel the truth, to reveal that she wasn't Mia but Olivia. She couldn't find a reasonable explanation for her past actions and, at this point, lacked the courage to reappear before Ariel. Yet, she still owed Ariel 10,000. Fortunately, there's always a way out. After settling the compensation, Olivia's mother remembered an additional insurance policy she had purchased for Olivia's father's taxi. The coverage, not insignificant, included extra accident insurance, reimbursing them with over a hundred thousand. Olivia returned the money to Ariel, explaining that her father, shaken by the recent incident, was reluctant to continue with the taxi business. Considering her parents' age and the circumstances, she decided to return to her hometown, a small city, to support them. Ariel was visibly upset, and Olivia shared the sentiment. Olivia truly felt the reluctance to part ways. She believed this unique and beautiful connection could compensate for the pain caused by Jason. As for Jason, Olivia had a conversation with him. She played the recorded phone call, calmly informing him that she wouldn't reveal the recording to Ariel, sparing him from exposure. However, Olivia made it clear that if Jason ever deceived or betrayed Ariel in the future, she would make the recording public for everyone to hear. Jason nodded in agreement. Olivia told him, in reality, you are not worthy of Ariel. She added, actually, I am not worthy of her either. With that, Olivia left, and Ariel accompanied her. Strangely, Ariel never seemed to suspect anything about Olivia, not even the discrepancy in names and ID information when paying the hospital bills. Ariel had known from the beginning that Mia was actually Olivia, she knew who Olivia was. Ariel, a diligent woman who would do her homework, had thoroughly investigated Jason's past before entering a relationship with him. She understood Jason's intentions and accepted him, seeking his appearance. When Olivia appeared, Ariel recognized her immediately, having seen Olivia's photos before. Ariel also knew Olivia's intentions. Choosing not to expose or prevent, Ariel willingly went along with Olivia's act. She believed it was a good opportunity for Jason to have reservations, making him more devoted to her. If Olivia had any leverage against Jason, Ariel thought it would be even better. As long as Ariel could find an opportunity to win Olivia's affections, Olivia's leverage would become Ariel's leverage. With or without Olivia's father's incident, Ariel believed there would always be other circumstances where she could assist Olivia. Even without such incidents, Ariel was confident that time, combined with her genuine sincerity and trust, would gradually win Olivia's heart. In reality, Olivia was a bit naive, appearing clever only on the surface. The truly shrewd one was Ariel, seemingly innocent but astute in understanding the complexities of life. Ultimately, women's strategies often emerge in response to men like Jason. In the battle between genders, women have always been on a journey.